Hello, this is Tyler with Alltrack. Uh, I'm standing in front of a 2021 Alltrack AT20 HD. Uh, we want to do a quick walk around video explaining some of the common features of the machine as well as some questions we often get asked about. Uh, it's a two passenger cab. Um, it's equipped with a Hats 4H50 turbo diesel uh, and a full tier 4 final. Um, this machine is set up with the 16 inch all season tracks or steel bars on rubber belts. Um, full hydrostatic drive. Uh, it has solid rubber tires throughout. Um, independent suspension, so it has independent rubber torsion suspension. And this unit is equipped with a 3,500 pound capacity flat deck and in this case it is also equipped with a all track supplied fire skid. So to start any of these tier 4 AT20s or AT50 machines, uh, first thing you want to do is Turn the key on, that turns the power on. Um, the machine actually starts all by itself. As long as it's in auto mode, uh, you don't have to press auto, but if it's not, you just gotta press auto once. Then you click run. The machine will automatically count down and run the glow plugs. You'll hear the fuel pump start. From there, the engine is running. As soon as it's in manual running mode, you're good to increase the speed. This button will increase the speed all the way up to whatever speed you set it at. Uh, most of the time operating, you can operate, you know, about 1600 RPM to 1800 RPM should do just about everything you need to. Uh, you can go faster if you need more RPM. Um, you can toggle through various different engine information. Give you the hours of the machine, voltage, engine torque, um, then also when you do have a trouble code that'll pop up on the screen, you can use these buttons to navigate those trouble codes. Um, if you want to kill the engine quick, you simply hit off. You'll see it automatically shut everything off and it goes into off mode. If you want to restart the engine at that point, just simply press auto again. Then you'll be good to start the unit once over. So from off mode, you'll see there's also a couple additional things you can do. So from off mode, you can actually go into operator setup. Um, in operator setup, you can actually adjust how quickly the various data points scroll through the display while the unit's operating. Uh, LCD brightness, um, pressure units, and say units for basically everything that's displaying as well as date and time. So date and time needs to be set once or when the battery is disconnected. Otherwise it's saved inside the control and you shouldn't have to adjust it. All right, I'm just gonna explain uh, some of the features inside the engine compartment here. Um, so starting with the driver's side, if you open this driver's side engine compartment, you'll see we have of course the battery mounted. Um, we always tie up the block heater cord up onto the driver's side of the machine. This rearward one with the uh, with the manual pump on it, that is the brake override system. So in case you ever have to override the system for towing and the machine's not operable, this is what that is controlled and there's a separate video on that. Um, this valve up here is the automatic track tension adjustment. So really the track adjustment should be set between about 800 and 1200 PSI. Uh, if it's outside of that, you're either running too low track tension or possibly too high track tension. Um, there is a video on actually adjusting that as well. This lower block down here, so this is the pilot control system. So essentially this is what releases the brakes and sends hydraulic flow to the um, joystick so you can actually operate the machine. Um, there's also another coil here which actually controls the high speed function, so that shifts the motors into high speed. Um, you really shouldn't have to ever really maintain anything here. Uh, if there ever is a problem, these switches actually do light up. They turn red when they're energized, so that'll help to isolate any kind of an electrical fault. Um, and we may ask you questions if you call for diagnosing an issue um, just related to if those lights are on or not. So um, here at the very front, you'll see this is the battery isolator, so flicking that off, of course, isolate the battery from the cab. 
Uh, something to note is that the engine will still start with this battery isolator turned off and that's a function of the tier 4 engines and needing to have constant battery power. Um, but you will not be able to drive the machine when this is flipped off because everything else is dead. So. Okay, so on the passenger side of the machine here, uh, you're going to see, so this is the fuel filter filler. Um, it just, to say, it just spins on. There's actually a cable inside that holds it so you don't lose the, the cap so it can't uh, fall loose. Put that back up. If you open the passenger side here of the engine compartment, you'll see right away we have the hydraulic tank. Um, this is the hydraulic level gauge here. As long as your hydraulic level is kind of between high and high, the hot point and the low point, um, that's considered standard you know, operating condition for the hydraulic tank. Um, you'll see here there is a drain on the bottom of the tank as well with a lock. Um, so you can put a hose onto here to run into a clean bucket if you need to drain the oil. Um, up here behind the hydraulic tank, you'll actually see there's a return filter. So that's a large spin-on filter for um, the returning hydraulic oil. You have to change that according to the schedules outlined in the operator's manual. Um, here are the red cap, you'll see this is the engine uh, crankcase oil level dipstick. Um, beside it here, we have the secondary fuel filter. Uh, the engine fuel filter is mounted just down there. And then at the front of the engine compartment here is the primary fuel filter. Alright, I'm going to show you how you tilt the deck on an AT20 HD equipped with the electric over hydraulic tilting deck. Uh, so what you want to do is go from the passenger side here, open the engine compartment door. Um, you'll actually see right here the pump that does the lifting is actually right here. Um, just mounted up on the top of the passenger side uh, radiator tunnel. Um, so you can actually lift the deck without opening this front cover, but I will show you first how to open the front cover because this also helps you doing radiator cleanouts. So there's a spring latch here on the passenger side as well as one on the other driver's side just behind the battery isolator. Once you open up this front cover, you can actually get full access to this pump. Um, so on this pump here, you'll see there's actually a sticker explaining which direction you need to move the lever to lift and lower the deck. But essentially you want to flip this over to one side um, and then this button here actually gives you the electric power to lift the deck. If you hold that button you'll hear the locks actually unlock and then the deck will start tilting. If ever you're in an emergency and you lose battery power, um, it's also equipped with the manual override so you can put in a standard jack handle and you can also lift it manually as well. So we'll just lift this all the way up here. Once you hear it start to bog down, you reach the end of the stroke. Um, once you got the deck up, you'll see that there's also a safety prop here. It's just latched right on the inside of the frame. So make sure that's in place before you operate underneath the machine. Once you have the deck up, you can see that you have full access to the drive pumps, fuel tank, as well as in this case, a rear mounted winch. Um, this greatly facilitates maintenance and uh, inspections. Okay, I'm going to show you how to release the brakes on an Alltrack AT20 HD in the event that you need to tow it. Um, so the only time you'd have to do this is when you lose engine power or you blow a hydraulic line or something like that, you need to get it back onto a trailer in an emergency. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to locate the valves here on the back of the deck. You can reach these with the deck up or you can get them with the deck down, reaching between the hydraulic, the headache rack and the engine compartment. So you'll see here they're marked tow and drive. So right now it's in the drive position. You want to simply pull these handles down to line this lower eyelid up. It'll be in the tow position. Do this with both sides. This is essentially the left track and the right track. You want to make sure they're both switched over to tow. At that point you open up the driver's side engine compartment and you'll notice here there is a valve here. So this hydraulic valve is the emergency tow valve override. You want to turn this handle all the way to the left and pull it out. 
once that's done, you can actually pump up this up using a jack handle um, or in a pinch you could use it, you know, really any kind of crowbar or whatever. It's quite easy to push. You can actually push it by hand even if you need to. Um, so once you get about 300 PSI into the system, the brakes will be totally released and you can easily tow the machine. Uh, just remember that when it is in this position, you have no brakes. So it is strictly used for towing and you should tow only at a snail's pace. You shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be going much faster than a walk. Uh, once you're ready to go back into drive mode, simply press this button in, it bleeds the pressure, turn it back into the lock position and then go to the back of the machine here again and flip these handles back to drive mode, reinstall the lock bolts and you're good to proceed uh, on as it normally would. Department, depending on the model and configuration of your AT20 or AT50 vehicle, the track tension adjustment may be located in a different spot, but it will be the same valve. Uh, so as you can see here, this here is actually the pressure gauge for the track tension adjustment block. Um, this one mounted back here in this model is actually charge pressure, so disregard this for this, uh, this procedure. What you want to do is locate these two valves. So the tall one is actually your pressure relief valve. The shorter one is actually the unloader valve. So the unloader valve is actually where you want to set your working pressure for the unit. The relief valve should be set higher than the track adjuster pressure. This is just to back up in case something happens and you don't blow a line. Um, this here is the relief. So if you want to take the tracks off or do any track maintenance, you would disengage that and that bleeds the pressure of the system. In this case, you would leave it on. So first off, you want to start by loosening off these two nuts, um, the two lock nuts. So I believe one of them is an 11 16 and the other is a three quarter. I believe this one's 11 16 this is three quarter. Um, then you want to get yourself an Allen key to fit the uh, the adjustment, which, which are both the same in this case. Uh, so what I'll do, I've already gone ahead and loosened these off. So first thing you want to do is actually tighten this one down so you get it out of the way. So in other words, tighten it down, you know, two or three turns just to make sure you're not, a, not getting in the way when you're adjusting this one. Once you have this one tightened down, you will adjust your pressure with this one and you'll see that the pressure actually bounces kind of about 100 to 200 PSI depending what setting it's at. So that's the block unloading or dumping the, the remaining flow to tank and then kicking it on when it needs to. Um, so this is actually what you're adjusting your work pressure with. Once you have this adjusted, then you back this one off till you see on the gauge that it is now going through the relief valve. And then you tighten it up half a turn. So it's sitting just over top of the setting of the unloader valve. Um, I'll get my colleague here to start it and I will do the same thing with the engine running so you can see how it works. last video there when the engine was running I was able to adjust the pressure so at the working range is sitting at around 800 psi and the unloader will vary between 800 and 600 as it kicks on and off to provide pressure to the valve I tightened up the relief valve about half a turn past the setting where I could see that it was it was actually reducing pressure um, that gets the setting set properly if you set it wrong where you have the relief valve set lower then the unloader valve, what happens is it just builds heat. Um, of course, heat and robbing horsepower is an enemy of any hydraulic system. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd be glad to help anytime. Thanks a lot. So the AT20 is equipped with solid rubber tires. Um, so the outer rim is actually, this is all, all solid rubber and the inside is a steel wheel with a welded in center. Um, there really shouldn't be any real maintenance to do with these tires other than inspecting them every once in a while for uh, rips and tears or something that may cause uh, you know the failure of the tire. Um, the hub itself is a 
oil bath, metal face sealed hub. There's really no maintenance required for these hubs other than inspecting through the sight glass to be sure you have oil at least halfway up in the hub. Um, and as far as any other kind of maintenance, you just want to make sure that you don't notice contamination or any kind of water or anything inside the hub. As long as you have oil and uh, it looks clean, there's really no further maintenance for the hub. Okay, the rear drive sprocket on the AT20 is a urethane that's molded to a solid steel hub. Uh, you want to take a look on it occasionally just to make sure you don't notice any kind of delamination around the outer rim or excessive wear on the sprocket itself. Uh, aside from that, make sure the nuts are torqued to 190 foot-pounds and uh, no other action is really required. The tracks on the AT20 are composed of two rubber belts and then we have steel crosslinks that connect the two rubber belts together as well as a tire guide on the inside. We have three different track widths available, uh, a 22 inch rubber track, a 22 inch standard steel track and the standard 16 inch all-terrain track. Um, you'll notice they also have a hinge here at the bottom so if you ever need to di dismount the tracks you can actually disconnect pull the pin out of the out of the track and you can actually split the track into two halves um, this will help you if you ever got to put them back on or you're doing maintenance where you have to remove a track um, it's a lot simpler than than a simple one-piece track so so here we see the main drive pumps for the AT20 HD. Uh, so what we actually have here is a dual closed loop hydro hydrostatic piston pump. Um, so there's actually the, the front pump, in this case controls the passenger side, and the rear pump here actually controls the driver's side. Um, this pump here on the back is actually the pump that runs the auto tension system. Okay, to change the air filters on these AT20 units, um, simply unlatch these three latches here on the air filter housing. Give it a little pull. You notice inside that there's a primary filter. Well, once you pull that out, a secondary safety filter. Uh, so when you replace these filters, replace them both at the same time as long as they're dirty. Sometimes the safety doesn't need to be replaced if you replace the primary within time. Um, put it back in, just slide it in, make sure it's well seated. Let's reinstall the cap. So the AT20 is equipped with a front brush guard. Um, if you need to wash the window or whatever, you can actually just remove these two pins here in the front. They're on uh, cables so you don't lose them. And then you can uh, just lift this up and you can get under there to, uh, to wash the window or any way you need to. So if your machine is equipped with the optional worn winch, um, you'll notice inside the cab there's going to be a wireless remote that's mounted uh, right up front in the dash. So to turn it on, you press both buttons at the same time and you hold them for about three seconds. At that point you'll notice that the light on the screen on the remote actually turns green. And you should be good to run the winch. So you can also reach your hand up inside and also work the manual clutch as well to run it out the handling if you need to.